Canelo Alvarez has until Friday afternoon to decide if he's fighting Sergey Derevchenko or he will be stripped of his IBF title. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Now, very interesting news. I've been following this particular story since it broke and the news was available some pertinent decision making needs to be done from golden boy team canelo and the zone and it's very interesting basically i'm gonna give you guys the cliff notes in case you missed some of the past videos canelo alvarez beat danny jacobs to become the ibf unified champion at middleweight right then after that point he became the franchise champion with the wbc a very new position that they created for canelo now he doesn't have to fight any of his mandatories like jamal charlo canelo was supposed to fight on the quote-unquote mexican dates september 14th and rumors swirled that he could be fighting jaime mungia and you know triple g demetrius andre sergey kovalev then it came out that the zone would only approve canelo to face sergey kovalev or Triple G because they wanted a big fight that they feel is marketable. Kovalev ended up fighting Anthony Yard. Well, he hasn't fought him yet, but they they can't agree on the, the terms. And uh, Golden Boy offered Kovalev's team, per Kovalev's team, a low-balled offer that was less than Danny Jacobs met, made. So they said, you know what? We're just going to fight our mandatory. It left Canelo without a dance partner. I don't think Canelo wants to fight Triple G for whatever reason. He wants to starve him out. He already beat him, whatever the situation, but DAZN wants him to fight him. Then Canelo and team, you know, in the midst of all of this, they missed the IBF deadline to request an exemption because the IBF is, is pretty particular about things. They missed the deadline to request an exemption and give a reason as to why they can't face their mandatory with the IBF, which is Sergey Dervinchenko. So it was supposed to go to a purse bid. And recently, Canelo's team made contact with Sergey Dervinchenko. People thought he was going to vacate the belt, you know, and get rid of it. And, you know, it's just a lot of pressure. In my opinion, I, I said my opinion in the past. If he vacated the belt, that would be a bad look. Because Canelo would have to go against what he said he wanted as a fighter. As a fighter, he says this year he wants to be undisputed. So if you allow them to take your belt because you failed to request an exemption to fight another guy or you just let them strip you because you don't fight your mandatory, then that goes against what you said you wanted to do and what you wanted for yourself and your career. Now, shout out to Lance Pugmire. He says D-Day for Canelo to decide whether he's going to fight Sergey Devonchenko is Friday afternoon or he'll be stripped of his IBF belt. So, very interesting times. Now, we know Canelo, he's an A-side. He's made a lot of money. He has a lucrative deal with DAZN. So, all things considered, a belt doesn't necessarily define him. It's more so the hit his reputation and profile will take. Obviously, he doesn't need a belt for financial reasons or financial gains. Like, for example, some guys, they would need a belt just because a belt you know they're not making all the money in the world so being a champion is desired because now that puts them in you know an elite few well actually there's a lot of belts in boxing now but you get what i'm saying being a champion is, is part of their resume and they can you know when they're getting announced and stuff they can be announced as a champion canelo doesn't need that per se but what he does need is you know legacy points he needs to um make sure people remember him for the right reasons and stuff like that so from what I'm hearing, Canelo's team is, you know, working on a deal with Dervinchenko and it's it's close. Dervinchenko is an Al Heyman fighter, which is also, you know, something that has created issue for DAZN in the past, at least with Anthony Joshua, because Anthony Joshua was in a predicament where Gerald Miller, the original choice, 
failed a drug test, and then Gerald Miller ended up fighting Andy Ruiz, an Al Heyman advice fighter, and losing. So that wouldn't be a good look if Canelo were to either A, lose to Dervinchenko, or to look bad versus Dervinchenko, because again, that would benefit Dervinchenko, you know, and it would benefit like Al Heyman, who has nothing to do with the zone as an infrastructure. Now, the only other caveat caveat is this the zone previously said that they would only accept canelo next facing golovkin or kovalev clearly he can't fight kovalev you know who's fighting anthony yard so it's going to be interesting to see what the zone feels about this because you have to you have to understand there's a there's a couple of different things at play here you got the zone who is a streaming app and they're the highest priced streaming app of this kind at $20 a month. They want a big fight. They need to build customers for life. They need to, you know, entice people to stay loyal and, you know, get the service get, you get on the app, get on the platform, tell their friends about it. So they're looking for big fights. So they're not necessarily in the business of following the rules or making lesser fights then needed they need to gain subscribers and in my honest opinion canelo versus sergey derinchenko it's right it's you know following the rules is what's needed is what is your mandatory so nobody can get mad at that however i don't think it's a big fight you got to look at it if canelo versus danny jacobs did six hundred thousand concurrent streams and Jacobs had at least fought Gennady Golovkin and knocked out Peter Quillen and held a good account of himself in his recent fights. And that only did 600K. What kind of numbers could you really and truly expect from a guy who's, I don't even know if he speaks English, he might, you know, um, but he's he's not like a showman. He's a good fighter. He's a, he's a top 10, top 15 guy for sure, but he's not like a showman or he's not going to help sell tickets. Canelo don't really do much for the pre-build to sell tickets like in terms of i'm talking about having the um a personality you know like the broners and mayweathers and conor mcgregor something like that that would help to get people vested in the fight and he's just not a big name again and he already lost to danny jacobs a guy that canelo just beat so again rules are rules i get that and i i think it would look probably worse if canelo didn't fight him because that's what triple g did you know, Triple G had the opportunity to fight him when Canelo failed a drug test last year with Clint Buterol. And then Triple G opted to fight a guy that had been on the shelf for two plus years coming off a loss to Edison Lada and moved him up from 154 to 160. And that wasn't a good look for Triple G's career. So if Dervinchenko, you know, if Canelo don't fight him, then that would be a look. It looked like Canelo's ducking him. And it just goes down the list because if, if Canelo doesn't fight Dervinchenko, the next highest rated guy with the IBF is Triple G. So it looks like if they both duck Dervinchenko or they both refuse to fight him, then that's going to look horrible for the DAZN fighter. So to me, DAZN's really in a pickle. They got a fight that's really being ordered and mandatory. And it's a, I think it'll be an interesting fight, you know, stylistically. Dervinchenko is pretty tough, but I just don't think it's a big fight. I don't think it's a fight that moves the needle where DAZN probably needs. And it's with it's with the ops, you know, it's with Al Heyman, which doesn't really have nothing. PBC fighters don't really have nothing to do with DAZN. So you don't want to look bad here. Definitely you don't want Canelo to lose or look suspect in this, just like the Joshua Andy Ruiz. You know, that would leave DAZN kind of in ruins if, if they lose both of their big stars in, in the same year, you know, to an Al Heyman fighter. That wouldn't be a good look. So it's a it's a pretty dangerous fight for Canelo. Just dangerous in terms of um, it's not going to build, it's not going to be a blockbuster fight. Like, it's going to be Canelo, so obviously there's going to be some fanfare attached to it. But other than that, it's not like a huge, like, you know, Canelo Mayweather or something like that. And... He's going to have to look good. It's just a it's it's a top rated middleweight fight without the perks of being a, a huge blockbuster fight, if that makes any sense. Let me know what you guys think. 
it'll be interesting to see what's decided. I mean, Canelo obviously could not fight and I don't know, like get stripped of the belt, but that would be a bad look too. So we'll see how it plays out, but he has until Friday from what I understand. Let me know what you guys think. We working. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.